Welcome, everybody, to the news! Twitch! TwitchCon Special Edition. Today we're going to talk a little bit about everything that happened over this past weekend at TwitchCon. As well as all the cool stuff we got from it. All the things we learned. And all of the, uh, just like, just, you know, just all the, all the happenings that have occurred over the past several days. Because it has been... A very amusing weekend. As it always is, TwitchCon never fucking fails to deliver on trauma. Oh my god, I'm almost teary I'd say this because it's like, it's so true. It's just like, I just feel like I'm, I'm, yeah. It's just like, it's so true. It's never fails. It is like a sure fire thing. A sure fire th thing. Crazy, man. Uh, it'll always deliver in that respect. Um, you're probably wondering what this is. Maybe we should maybe we should uh, start with like what I got from from uh, TwitchCon because this is my new favorite pillow. <laughs> it is, it is. It's actually I had to go downstairs to get it off the couch uh, just so I could show you guys because the second I got home, the second I got home, I took it, I put it into uh, on the couch. Uh, it is now my couch pillow. So um, yeah, it is the Discord uh, little Discord guy. You know, you see him when you just, you just, he does this. You, maybe you recognize him. We do this. There we go. Right? Yeah, you, you recognize him now. Okay, <laughs> so that is, uh, that's the new Twitch, uh, Twitch pillow, or I'm sorry, a uh, Discord pillow, uh, that I got, uh, from the Discord partner party that happened, uh, at the Tech Museum on the first day of the event. I did not actually attend the party, uh, because I had, uh, a couple of, uh, so I had, I had a, a few friends here, uh, and they work, they work, uh, uh, for a company that was doing a lot of stuff for TwitchCon. Um, and my friend is the CEO of that company, and so we were all kind of hanging out together. Uh, my friend ended up leaving with his girlfriend, and, uh, and... Oh, my, no, my friend ended up getting his girlfriend into the party, and then left me with all of his employees. And so I was hanging out with who they're totally cool, right? I mean, I was just hanging out with their employees, whatever. Um, but then, like, the other, like, one of the other guys who was a partner... Another guy works there full time, and he's also a partner. Um, uh, he ended up like ditching them, and so it was like it was like me to take care of the two people who couldn't get into the party. And I was like, that's that's fine with me because the party was like it was loud. I mean, listen, listen to me. I'm so, so fucking old. It was loud, uh, and it was, you can't network. I've never liked parties at conventions where you can't hear the person you're standing next to, uh, unless it, unless I'm going for the express purpose of just getting wasted and not talking to anybody. But for the most part, I like to go to these events and actually communicate and network with people. That's kind of what I like to do. Uh, and you can't do that at a lot of the parties where it's basically just like loud music and everything. And so uh, while the Discord party, from what I saw, because I went in to grab my loot bag and everything, and then I uh, checked it out for like a brief second, and then I left. Um, uh, what I did see, it did look kind of cool. It was like multiple floors. Uh, one of the top floor was like industry only, uh, or third or fourth floor was industry only. Uh, and, uh, but yeah, it was like this, you know, music everywhere. It was fine. It was fine. I mean, if you like loud music and you don't really feel like communicating with somebody that's standing right next to you, that's totally fine. But I did get this. Uh, it also came with a couple other things. Uh, it came with, uh, let's go through this. Let's see. Ugh. So it also... Can you network if you don't bring a Switch? Oh man, I should have brought my kids Game Boy. Damn, I should have brought the DS too. That could have got them so many new friends. <laughs> so many street pass things. It also came with uh, with this guy here. It is a uh, a bag. It's just a bag. I mean, we have like a bazillion of these. If you need a Discord bag, you know, that's what it is. It's just a nice material Discord bag. Done. Uh, also in here, this is now the Twitch loot, Twitch specific loot. Uh, partners obviously got the backpack. Um, I don't know if, I don't think any, I think only partners got the backpack. Yeah, yeah, because it does say partner on it, but, uh, uh, I think everybody got this. This is the, the pull string bag. Um, and the pull string bag is just as what you would expect. Uh, if you've gone to enough conventions, you have a fucking thousand of these, just like I do. Uh, I actually still have my original Minecon uh, bag. It's basically just big green and it's a creeper face across the front of it. It actually sells for quite a bit on eBay. One of these days I'll sell it, but I'm just gonna wait uh, until, uh, I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm just never gonna sell it, I guess. Um, anyway, so yeah, we got this. That's awesome. I did not get the fancy robe. You know what the EXBC was wearing up on stage for the closing, uh, the closing notes? Yeah. Yeah. No, I didn't get that. Uh, I don't, th I didn't see that for sale anywhere, but I didn't go to the store. The store had a fucking insane line. Uh, there was actually a stream where, oh, wow, I was supposed to turn those off. Whoops, I'm going to do that right now. Hey, Aaron, thanks so much. 
<laughs> Thank you, Aaron, for the 18 months. We're doing news now. Shush. All right. So there's more. There's more. There's more. Uh, I also got my hands on uh, what is it, Magic the Gathering or something. Wait, is this Magic? Yeah, Magic the Gathering. Uh, it's just some cards. Um, unlock your deck in the arena. Use this unique code to get a TwitchCon deck in the Magic the Gathering. Did I show you guys that side yet? I don't think so. Can you guys see that very well? Oh, no, you can't. Okay, good. So you guys can't steal that from me. Uh, if I ever end up playing Magic the Gathering Arena. Uh, so it comes with a starter deck, um, which is cool if you play, if you play Magic. Uh, also came with uh, one of these, which is, uh, I feel like I got this last year. I feel like we had, I, I'm pretty sure if I go downstairs and look in the drawers, I'll probably find the last year's TwitchCon uh, 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 cup here. Um, let's see. Also, also, also a deck of cards, Twitch cards. Uh, a Twitch dog tags, a Twitch, um, uh, a keychain, uh, in a Twitch, uh, uh, packaging. Uh, so that is basically all we got from, uh, I don't want to say all, because, I mean, it's, that's a number of things, uh, that you get from, uh, from the TwitchCon. The backpack itself is actually kind of nice. Uh, good material. I like that they put this on the bottom. I, I'm, I'm a, like, I like transport backpacks, so I like that they put these things on the bottom, so that way you can just throw your backpack Everywhere you want when you go to school. I'm never gonna go to school again, but still, if I ever decide to throw my backpack somewhere, I know it'll be protected by this right here. Uh, actually, I'm thinking that maybe one day Declan uh, can uh, um, can uh, get uh, can wear this and take it to school and everything. Um, but he has to earn it first. He has to, get, he has to get his partner first, which you know he's got to work for that. Uh, so yeah, that is the extent of the swag that I got from uh, TwitchCon. I didn't buy anything because I didn't wait in line. Uh, the shirt, uh, obviously, also Discord shirt, got that from the partner party, that was the other thing in the bag. The Discord partner party, like, for what it was, like, you got a lot of stuff, man. I mean, we got that sweet-ass pillow, like, this beautiful pillow. Uh, we got the bag, if you like bags. Uh, and we also got a shirt, like, fucking A, like, that was, that's great. I'm, I'm actually gonna use this thing. I have so many, like, backpacks now, <laughs> like, between sling bags or whatever bags and... Uh, and, uh, uh, backpacks, like, from BlizzCon and everything. Like, I have a, a BlizzCon messenger bag. Uh, I have a TwitchCon fanny pack. I have a TwitchCon backpack now. I have a, a Blizzard backpack. I have, I mean, like, I could, I could just, like, wear all of them and just be, like, the ultimate Blizzard Twitch combo bag guy. Um, yeah. And so, uh, let's see. So, Let's talk about like the first thing that I went to go see while I was there. This is literally the first thing that I walked up to because uh, I saw this paper in my in my bag. It came and they put it inside of the uh, uh, inside of the bag here. And <clears throat> this is actually uh, the layout. It's based, it's it's essentially a, a, a an audio interface. Now I'm not going to go over every element of element of this, but I did go over to their booth and I grilled the dude on this thing. Um, and uh, what I've determined just from me checking it out and like you know like. Again, like asking a ton of questions, and I had an opportunity to sit there and play with it. Uh, this thing is sick. So we're gonna talk about this uh, probably in the future because I'm gonna hit these guys up and see if they can hook me up with like a discounted or a free copy or something. But Bike Man was working with them on this. You guys probably remember. Um, uh, I think he was talking about it. So, so the fact that it was they're working with an actual streamer on getting this stuff really, really actually shows because uh, everything that I threw at him for like things I did not anticipate this gamer branded thing to have. Uh, they have it, so that is huge. The effects processor, uh, the effects processor that's on it is also very clean. Uh, one way you could tell if a, an effects processor is shit or not is by listening to the pitch. The when they pitch it, uh, the uh, the the uh, uh, the audio signal up or down, you could usually hear kind of like repeating, like clicking, almost like a CD would clip or something, uh, or, or, or skip. You kind of hear that a little bit as the audio, like if you hold a note. Um, and that's because, uh, of a low bit rate, uh, and when they resample the audio, there's a lot of, like, you know, tech in there with how that functions, but, uh, because they're operating at 48 kilohertz at 24 bits, uh, that gives them a little bit more wiggle room to create these effects and do these pitch effects, and also they're not doing it with, like, uh, just a straight-up onboard chip, uh, they have a, a DSP, have a DSP processor on the unit itself, and everything else is controlled via software, so it's actually a very cool unit, uh, we'll probably talk about it a little bit later, it's called GoXLR, uh, by Hel Helicon, uh, Helicon Gaming, Helicon Gaming, uh, so if you want more info on that, you can probably just follow them on Twitter, Helicon Gaming, at whatever, it is a mixer, it is a mixer, it is a mixer, and a whole bunch of other stuff, so, uh, like I said, kind of hard to really do a review of, of this thing when I talk about the cardboard part, but I can tell you again that, uh, that, uh, it does do a lot of really cool shit, and I'm definitely looking forward to getting my hands on some more, uh, or maybe a demo of the unit or something later.
That actually went really far. Um, so, uh, that's it for loot. Let's talk a little bit about the convention now. Um, because the convention part was also kind of, uh, kind of important because, uh, that's the whole reason we were there. Like the features and everything that they announced. Uh, we'll go and talk a little bit of this and let's go and zoom in a little bit. There we go. All right, so TwitchCon 2018 keynote, everything you needed to know. I was not there for the keynote because I usually watch these things from home. Um, I was actually, because TwitchCon took place uh, at, uh, um, you know, not far from where I live, I ended up actually just staying here at the house uh, and just Ubering down or driving down uh, every day of the convention. So that was a lot, obviously a lot easier for me. Unfortunately, it also came with, uh, with needing to, um, you know, do like home chores, which was awesome. It was like... I got, I got to go to, uh, uh, I got to, I got to go, go to a convention and then come home and then like do like, you know, home stuff and then, uh, and then go out and party and then come back and then wake up the next morning and do more home stuff. And then go, it was a really odd combination of like, usually when I go to a convention, I'm like completely disconnected from home. Uh, and you know, this time it was like, it was kind of a mix of both, which is kind of uh, interesting. Warm water. Thank you so much, dude. Um, You'll, I'll, I'll talk to you after the thing. Uh, say so. So going over some of the features that they announced because this stuff was actually pretty. Some of the stuff was pretty profound, pretty great. Uh, let's see. First off, squad stream. So this will pretty much eliminate the need to use uh, any kind of uh, any kind of uh, um, uh, uh, of, of multi-stream type site. Right? There's a there's like there's like like two major ones out there. Um, so you wouldn't necessarily need to use uh, those sites anymore because they will be able to uh, to basically do it all in the uh, all in in your browser, which is great. Jab Live, welcome. Thank you so much, dude. Um, so that is that is actually fucking awesome because there's like a, there's a lot of times you know. W so when I stream like squad games, I know a lot of a lot of the people I play with stream also, and like unless there's like a multi-stream uh, you know link that somebody pops in. A lot of you guys don't get to watch it from their angle. You typically only watch it from my angle. Uh, this is awesome because it'll give us an opportunity. It'll get an opportunity for for streamers to basically like to to help you know get eyeballs on other uh, other people that they play with all the time, uh, which I think is like I think is great because the people that you play with they're they're actually contributing to the content of the stream. So why not like be able to give them uh, uh, some kind of platform where they can um, uh, you know where they can also sh you know be seen. And this is a great way. Uh, of doing that because I'm not, uh, I don't have a low key God complex or anything. And I feel like that kind of uh, cross promotion and that kind of helping your buddy out uh, is pretty important. Uh, so yeah, this is, uh, this is a huge thing. I think uh, that, that they're going to be putting out uh, a lot of this stuff. A lot of these features, by the way, are things that are going to be coming, uh, coming soon, coming soon. Like for example, this is going to be coming later this year. Uh, uh, and then uh, yeah, squad streams is like easy mode affiliate growth for new streams. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Um, highlight editor updates. Highlight editor will now allow you to now stitch together clips. If you look at this, this here, it'll actually allow you to, uh, to basically take like a chunk here and then take like another chunk and then you'll be able to basically create a small, uh, a, uh, um, uh, you know, a nice kind of condensed uh, clip that has multiple clips in it. And that's awesome because there's a lot of times where you don't necessarily get uh, the full gist, gist of what happens. There's a lot of times when we as streamers say something really stupid uh, or prophetic, one of the two, uh, and then that thing happens or the opposite of that thing we said happens uh, beyond one minute, uh, which is like the limit for a for a clip. And it's nice to be able to now take it and like cut it down. There's plenty of there's so many, so many good things that you could get from one cut person says something thing happens that is pretty much like all you need one just one edit will make a huge difference in like 90 percent of the clips out there uh so this is really awesome this is a huge thing uh for me and i also for you guys and some of you guys some of those of you uh clip commanders out there uh clip commanders out there will be able to uh get uh pretty crazy uh with your uh with your clips all right um, new feature section on Twitch homepage. If you get lucky enough to get featured, then great. This is, this is something that's awesome that you're going to be able to take advantage of. Uh, it's kind of, I mean, just a new featured area. That's just solid. I don't really feel like we really necessarily need to, uh, uh you know, got to enunciate those clips. Uh, yep. That's, you know, <laughs> super, 
<laughs> exactly. Uh, VIP badges. Streamers will now be able to recognize value members of the community without requiring them to subscribe or moderate with VIP badges. VIP members are recognized with the badge and can also chat slow uh, in slow sub only or follower only mode. So all this is, is, is basically a way of giving somebody um, access to uh, some, well, first some recognition and also uh, some, um, like some of the abilities that, 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 that subs uh, get. Uh, on this particular channel, uh, you won't really get anything other than than, <laughs> than a badge because I never put it in slow mode. Uh, we never do follower mode. We never do any of these like other modes, whatever that restrict uh, people from being able to chat. So uh, this is not something that really would have that much of an impact on here. But I could see this being a pretty big deal on on channels where like you know you have a, a thriving community and you, maybe you have somebody that uh, that deserves to have some kind of recognition because they do a pretty good job of keeping chat 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 moving. There are a few people that in every chat and even in my own chat uh, that do a pretty good job of uh of basically keeping keeping chat moving like keeping it going you know keeping the keeping keeping things hype and i appreciate that so so what i'll do is i'll be able to uh grant that to people and then immediately take it away when you piss me off which is going to be great new moderator tools in chat new moderator tools in chat uh i say we're not a striving community of course you are of course you are this is the few people that strive harder that's all new moderator tools in chat by clicking on someone's username, mods will now be able to see how long that person has been on Twitch and the details of their activity on the channel. So first off, you've always been able to see uh, how long <laughs> how long somebody's been able to uh, been uh, um, uh, subscribed or been uh, had an active account. Uh, but this takes it a, a several steps further and uh, and basically adds all these other tools of being able to figure out exactly like who this person is in terms of like their 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 ban or their moderation history. Now, this is something that the moderators will have to actually use in order for it to be effective. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Um, if somebody gets banned um, and you don't know, I mean, thankfully, they make it super easy. It's right here, right? It's right It's right here. So you basically just say, you know, uh, something happened. Uh, person said something. Boop. Done. Uh, moderator tools is actually a huge thing overall because, uh, well, because moderation is sometimes a bitch. Again, not a problem I typically have on 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 on, uh, on this channel. What up, blind? What up, dude? I totally missed you at, at TwitchCon. I'm I'm sorry. Uh, I didn't spend a lot of time on the floor. I spent most of the time actually out of the bar. So sorry about that. <laughs> I like, try to hook up with everybody. Um, but yeah, so uh, this is actually a great thing. It just shows uh, you could go into a channel that you maybe don't moderate very often, and you'll be able to see uh, if somebody's a problem child. It's also kind of nice too because uh, because you could leave comments without issuing any kind of a change to the account. So moderators can actually add a comment about somebody and nobody will be able to see it except for other moderators. So it basically what it is, it's a place where moderators can shit talk uh, uh, users in chat and uh, only mods would get the joke. Pretty funny. Uh, oh, you saw me across the road? You should have yelled, man. Would have ran across that road in a heartbeat. <laughs> Actually, no. The one road right in front of TwitchCon, they were pretty well protected. They had they had the cops up and down that road. I was gonna do it there. Uh, but yeah, so that's pretty that's pretty awesome. Uh, more more moderator stuff. Roles management page. This is great because it basically allows us to go through <clears throat> and we can add people. This is this is pretty much almost carbon copy. Uh, well, carbon copy like Salesforce and everything. But I mean, just more recent stuff. Car carbon copy uh, Discord. Uh, Discord does it like this, where basically you get to just assign roles and everything, and it's a layout like this. So you can just find the username, add the role, all the good stuff. Um, this is great. This is this is this is the way it should be. It's so easy to read. Uh, it's so easy to go through and like and and, and add or move uh, or add or, or remove um, uh, status and everything. And so this is a huge thing that I'm looking forward to as well. Um, not something you necessarily would use that often, but just to kind of if you want to go through do some sweeping changes to your moderator team, or if you have a big moderator team, then this is a great way to go ahead and moderate it. Subscription badges now show total number of months. This is something that people have been asking for for a very long time. Total number of months versus consecutive months. Uh, consecutive months, obviously, it's like if you miss, if I mean, if you, sometimes, sometimes you have a rough month uh, and you end up missing out. Or sometimes Switch Prime doesn't renew itself and you end up missing out. And then you lose out on that streak. So this is huge because now it's going to allow people to add all those months that they forgot or that they, you know, all that 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 well that time forgot pretty much uh and <clears throat> it'll become part of their uh their their consecutive or their total accumulative months uh thus granting their uh their badges and everything uh for that right i believe the badges actually come along with that so uh yeah sub badges will now change to show the total number of months there it is right there uh so 
So yeah, this is a this is this is a great this is this is a this is a good thing. I mean, lots of this stuff is actually like really good. No, none of these changes came down where I was just like, yeah, like uh, we don't need that. Um, at least I don't think so. I don't, we're not at the end of the page yet, but I'm pretty certain like everything here uh, has been pretty pretty good. In some way, we could spin this as good, kind of. Um, <clears throat> pretty sure that you can ask for any information Twitch has about us that should include the mod comments. Oh, I didn't even think about that. I guess you probably could, huh? Oh shit! Wow. I guess you could, yeah, you could be like, hey, I need to see my mod comments on all my sites. Set a submit a form and everything. <laughs> there you go. Uh, no more nightmares about losing my three year sub badge I have here. Yeah, yeah, well don't everybody go and unsub thinking, oh, I can get my badge back if I come back. Come on, don't, you, you guys don't have to worry about that. <laughs> but, <laughs> but still, no, it is, it is a good thing because there's a lot of folks I know that um, they missed a month and then that was it, and that was it. I think Woovy, Woovy's one of them. Uh, where he, he like missed a month or something, or he missed like a couple months because he wasn't paying attention because he's busy. And <clears throat> it would be somebody who's been such a community uh, um, contributor for so so many, so long that uh, it kind of sucks that I can't like necessarily like grant him, you know, I can't just like grant him the the uh, the badge that he that he that he deserves because he's been here for so long. So that's awesome. I'm really, really happy uh, for that. Uh, they go on and do a little bit of work about uh, talking about extensions. So they're adding more extensions and everything. These extensions are getting a much more complicated, uh, which is awesome. <clears throat> uh, the first one they showed off was Snap Camera. Is Snap Snap? This is Snap as a Snapchat. Okay, that's Snap. Um, I paid six months at a time. Oh shit, really? Oh, that's awesome. I didn't know you could actually. I guess you could do that, huh? huh. Uh, have a good one, Blind. Thanks for stopping by, dude. Um, let's see. So, uh, so Snap's brand new standalone desktop app that works with a custom extension built just for Twitch. Uh, now, if you guys look, uh, I, I installed, did I install the extension? I may, I, I think I installed the extension below the stream. I don't know if it actually works unless I have it active. Um, so, but I did, I did what I did do because I do want to show you guys how this actually works. Um, I did actually set up a separate camera, uh, using the app. Uh, and that allows me now to, I could show you guys, uh, how it works. So this is the, uh, the C930. Uh, C930E, no C920E, I forget, C920E maybe. <clears throat> so this is the, um, this is a just good, just regular old webcam. That's it, the old webcam we used to use here on the channel. It doesn't look as good. I know, it doesn't look as good. You look at that, and then you look at this. What a difference, man. What a difference. But the reason why I'm zooming in like this is because the app actually has a small preview. Uh, and so the only way I can actually really show you guys the preview is by zooming in. So... You know, I mean, unless unless we want to look at it like this, and it's just like then you won't really be able to see the entire effect. So, so this is what we have to do. Sorry, wow, it's a mouse. Uh, so it it basically functions almost exactly the same as uh as the Snapchat filters do. You can uh, now everyone can be uh a dog. Yay. Yeah, just like Snapchat, we're like every every Snapchat or Instagram model or whatever has uh some kind of filter over the face. Uh, no one really knows what anybody looks like. It looks like anymore. So we can do this, and it tracks. It tracks pretty well. So you can do all this stuff. Uh, you guys have probably seen this guy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> There's a couple other things that you could do. Uh, some of them I thought were pretty interesting were uh, McCree. It's high noon. High noon. Wait, what time is it actually? It's like two fifteen. Um, yeah, so you can do this. Uh, the only thing that sucks, you can't, you can't not, you can't like grab your hat and do this. You can't like do this without like losing the hat. See, I guess go, I can't, I can't like, ma'am, that doesn't work. Uh, <laughs> you can do mercy if you wanted to. This is raise your eyebrows. <laughs> we can play with this all day. I mean, they are, I mean, let's be real. They are fun. They are fun. Uh... That's a weird one. Wow. That's wasn't expecting that one. That was that's a lot. Man. How do I look? Yeah. <laughs> uh let's see. Uh that's probably the I mean, I just do a whole show like this. <laughs> Even wider than that, usually. Oh man. Uh, let's see. Obviously, we have. Uh, we have there we go. Uh, and then PUBG. They put a helmet on you. That's it. Right? Is that it? Is that it? 
Did it, is there a frying pan or something? Nope. Nothing. Wow. Wow. Dang. Uh, let's see. Yep. Timo. How cute? Do I look cute? <laughs> do I look fucking cute? <laughs> uh, yeah, so there's there's a ton of them. Like, there's some of them are pretty pretty interesting. Uh, you know, like you could, I mean, you could almost do a whole show like this. It's kind of like that software where you can um, uh, you can go and uh, uh, map your face to something. Face is like face rig, face rig. It's kind of like face rig where you could go through and do uh, and do uh, uh, you know basically build your own mapping to your face and everything. Uh, just so you guys can see, like the yeah, the just this kind of do a side by side without knowing if I know I can't really. But yeah, if I like, if I like squint my eyes, he fix that up. I open my eyes real wide, opens that up. So I could be like, oh, <laughs> oh man. Uh, let's see. Any others pretty interesting? I mean, some of them are fucking weird. Like, I don't know. It says fine face. What is that? What is? <laughs> Elliot. <laughs> <laughs> This one's fucking weird. What the hell? This is one of the user ones. I don't know, man. It was just, wow. Wow. <laughs> this is great. Oh, man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know. I know. We have a show to do. We have a show to do. But, man, this is just, this is great. <laughs> oh, emoji head. Here we go. Okay. Yeah. Hold on. Hold on. One, two, three. Nope. Four. There it is. Yeah. That's kind of nice. Uh, yeah, that's, I mean, it's this, again, there's just a ton of shit. Moth. What the fuck? There's moth? Oh, that's so, look, what is this? See, this is what happens when you get, like, this is, like, user-generated content. So, like, trials. You're going to have some bad ones. You're going to have some that just don't make any sense, and you're just like, how is that? How did I get make it past the filters? Because there's no, there's, there is none. There's no filters. It's just basically whatever people want to throw up there. <clears throat> but also opens it up. You can make your own. Which is awesome. You can make your own if you wanted to, uh, and then just you know put that up up on here and just do all that kind of stuff. Oh, cool! I can make my nose. No, it does, that doesn't work at all. That's like that's just like old school like Mac, the Mac photo booth thing. <laughs> yeah, no, weird. Um, yeah, that's not very good. That's terrible. Who the fuck thought that was good? Anyways, uh, maybe we we should get moving. Um. <laughs> I just can't stop. There's just so many of them. Where do, where do we stop? Where do you draw the line? Should we move on? We should move on. I think we should move on. Uh, but first, first though, first, first, I gotta find, there's gotta be at least, what is this? Oh my god, it's a fucking chicken nugget. I'm a chicken nugget. I look delicious. <laughs> That's a good chicken nugget, isn't it? That's a good chicken nugget. That's good. Uh, wow. I think that's a good spot to end that segment. Right there. You're not gonna beat this one. <laughs> this is uh that's the one right there all right <laughs> what the fuck is this so that is the um that is the tool i'm still looking at the screen it's freaking me out look at this thing just sitting here <laughs> so yeah you can basically just change to whatever you want you can have them uh, uh you can actually set up the extension to trigger certain things for you uh they do have uh death what the hell oh no that doesn't work with bongo cat doesn't do anything Oh my god, you have to tap the screen? That's fuck. Wow, see? That's just the stupidest thing. Um, look around. Hold on, one more. Let me see. Okay, I mean, like, yeah, it, that's, I mean, it's a neat effect, I guess, to have every once in a while if you're, like, AJ or something, but normal, it's kind of like, whatever. Uh, Fel and Kate, thank you so much. I got alerts turned off for the show, but I love you. Um, remember that Jesse Cox was a cloud on Legendary? That's right! Yes! Yes, that's right. The high guy filter. That's exactly what that is. <laughs> Uh, so, so Snap Camera introduced that as, as a feature that you can now download. You can download that. Anybody could download that app right now, actually. You could go, uh, it's called Snap Camera. You could just go and pull it up. Uh, I'll have the link below. Uh, it's, uh, snapcamera.snapchat.com. Uh, you could go through and, uh, and download it and try it for yourself. And you could put it on your stream right now. This is an active thing that is available right now. Now, you could set up sub base, uh, or you could set up like triggers for like if somebody subs or whatever, and it'll like rain or they'll rain bits on your character or on your person because it actually can sense where the movement is or where the person's at. So it makes the bits like hit and then roll, roll off of you. Uh, there's a lot of cool stuff that they, um, <clears throat> that they can do. And you know, depending on like how you use it, you get it's 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 a production increase, it really does. 
Um, it really does make a difference when you are able to do like, you know, cool stuff like this on your stream. Um, all these little things add up. And so this is something that's kind of cool. The only problem is that it was developed by snap, uh, and everything snap does somebody else picks up and does better. So you can look forward to somebody else picking this up and doing something better in the future. Uh, because that's pretty much the way Snapchat operates, <laughs> unfortunately for these guys. Um, let's see, let's go back. Let's see what else do we have. So this basically shows it off. Shows off one of the filters. You can scan it and whatever. Uh, <laughs> are Snapchat and Facebook owned uh, owned in the background or something? Snapchat uh, Snapchat is not owned. Snapchat is their own uh, independent company. They're they're actually publicly traded and everything. Their stock is like a dollar. Uh, and uh, and yeah, so they're, they're they're not affiliated with Facebook in that regard. Now, whether or not there's any kind of backroom dealings or something like that going on, I highly 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 doubt it because Facebook could just copy everything that they do. And not to worry about exactly what Kitten says. No one wants that sinking ship. That is per pretty much, pretty much that. That's it. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> let's see. <sighs> bounty boards. Thirty more brands coming on bounty boards. Bounty boards is great. We don't do a whole lot of work with bounty boards here on the channel as much, not as much as I should, honestly. Uh, if you're not familiar with bounty, bo bounty boards, this is exactly what it looks like. Basically, you go in, you can uh, activate a bounty, and within like seventy-two hours or so, you're gonna get a key, and you have a certain number of time. Uh, before you're able to, uh, where you have to actually do whatever it says for you to do. So in this case, in most cases, like 99% of cases, stream blank game for an hour. Uh, other other times it's like, uh, you'll show the trailer. So like, I actually got paid for showing you guys the uh, the Fortuna trailer uh, for Warframe. Remember, that was like a sponsored stream. We did that. That was like the easiest thing ever. Uh, and and this is basically, this is kind of a stream Warframe for an hour. Boy, that's, fuck, I should do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, watch Warframe. Yeah, Warframe trailer for thirty minutes. Yeah, exactly. That was that was an easy one. Um, but yeah, it looks at your it looks at your numbers over over a window, and it basically calculates how many how much uh, it should pay you based off of how many people you get to watch uh, for that segment. And usually they're pretty reasonable. Um, so like in my case, it will show you know on average I think we get here between like ninety and a hundred uh, uh, viewers, live viewers, and. <clears throat> And uh, so it tells me that if I drop below like 65 or something like that, that I will not get the bounty. But it's not that difficult to stay above 65 if you pick games that are interesting to play for that hour. Uh, or you wait until you build up a pretty good following and then you trick them. Like right now, guess what? This ain't the news anymore, bitch. We're from play games. <laughs> you get that one. You can carry over those viewers just like that. Uh, it's something to do. Um, <clears throat> so that is, uh, that is uh, something that's awesome that's going to be opening up to everybody. Twitch Sings. I don't understand Twitch Sings. I don't. I was there. I was there. I was there for Twitch Sings. Uh, I watched the video on Twitch Sings. I watched IGN cover Twitch Sings. Uh, I'll play it for you now. It is. It is. It is. It is. So being in the big booth was really cool, but I can't wait to see what the home streamer does with this. They're gonna be able to interact with their chat. They're gonna be able to have fun, like they're hanging out with their friends. That's gonna be great. I don't know. I don't get it. No, I don't. I don't get it. I don't think this guy got it either. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I don't. I don't. Unfortunately, I don't. I don't quite uh, uh, understand what makes it different from just streaming. You singing, <laughs> so uh, yeah, I, I get I get the draw. Uh, trust me, I'm married into a Korean family. I get the draw of karaoke. <laughs> I get it. Uh, it's there. Everybody, they're super into it. Uh, the entire family's into it. Uh, uh, Jen is into it. Jen's friends are into it. Jen's family's into it. Um, it is. It is. Uh, it is. Is a thing. People. People love karaoke. Just in general, people love karaoke. Now I feel. Um, I don't understand how this is different from just manually just doing it so i don't know it's literally a karaoke game and that's all i saw for, yeah okay so so there you go uh that's twitch sings good there it is <laughs> and that's pretty much the end of it I ended with that <laughs> that's that's the end of that so uh lots of good stuff i mean lots lots of good stuff the snap camera thing is actually a pretty good a pretty good deal because it's gonna it's gonna uh, uh, add a little bit of, uh, of production value to, to, to a lot of streams. Uh, it doesn't work. It won't work for me, unfortunately, because of the way that, that, you know, I, I host the video, 
uh, because of the video feed type that I host. I don't believe it's compatible with with this. Uh, I will try it though. I will try to see if we'll actually it, it'll actually um, uh, interface with the signal with the HDMI capture from the Elgato uh, and modify the signal before you guys see it without necessarily corrupting everything. Which that's what I'm worried about. I'm worried that if I add another another chain link into this machine over here. Uh, it's gonna just basically implode, so we'll have to wait and see. Um, there is some chat interaction with Sync. I mean, I could, I could, I could like sing to you guys, and you guys could interact right now. But uh, I guess I'll have to actually see the software in action. I didn't actually see the software. I just saw the booth, and I saw people lining up and singing and doing just what that guy did, uh, and uh, and then people talking about it. But no, not the actual software itself. So I have no idea. Uh, yeah. So moderation tools, great. VIP badges, awesome. The uh, I think we've skipped it already, but the consecutive are the uh, cumulative months for uh, for sub badges, which is actually that's actually exactly what I mentioned. Uh, uh, let's see the highlight editor being able to take and and condense uh, uh, clips to create. Uh, a little bit of editing, a little bit of an edited package there, mini edited package. That's awesome. Uh, and squads, like squads, squad, squad view is fucking sick. I honestly, I feel like this is probably the biggest one. I really do. I, I, yeah, the, the, the badges and all this stuff is great and everything. But from a, from a, uh, uh, from a viewer perspective, this is awesome. Uh, this is something that I feel like was, uh, long, long time in the making. I actually hope that there's a way to, um, move. So I can have like, instead of having like one, two, three underneath, I can have like one, two, three on the side. And then I can turn my ultra wide into like, into like the, the ultimate <laughs> Twitch viewing monitor, right? I think that would be uh, amazing. I'm curious about squad screens, how it handles audio. Uh, so the, the chat and the audio is fed from the stream that you want to, that you, that you make your main. Uh, given, I, 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 so I saw earlier, it was uh, somebody mentioned, maybe it was you can the audio sync was going to be off. Um, most of the time, it's within a couple seconds. So it is going to be off for sure. But uh, because they've gotten pretty fast over the past like, couple years uh, with their uh, um, uh, their restream times, I guess, or whatever, uh, then I feel like it probably won't be that big of a deal. But we'll see. It doesn't sync up the stream. Yeah, it's not going to sync up the stream, unfortunately. But uh, But I feel like getting it close enough, it will work for me. You know, I think I, I really do feel like it would work pretty well. Uh, it actually might work in our favor when you're watching a stream and somebody else goes, oh, God, and you're like, oh, shit, what was that? And you go click over there to see what it was, and you could go back two seconds and see what it is. Uh, the next, the only thing I'm disappointed in not seeing, actually, is a rewind feature. Man, I know that this is like, that's like huge overhead to introduce a rewind feature, right? Something that, that YouTube has had all along. Um... But uh, yeah, that would be great. And a higher bit rate. Obviously, I want a higher bit rate, but that's also like introducing like a ton, a ton of more uh, uh, costs and everything. So it's not something that we'll probably see anytime soon. But you know, we'll see. We'll see. Maybe next year. Maybe we'll get lucky. Um, let's see. Let's see. Next, 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 next. Uh, should we talk about LineCon? Let's talk about LineCon because this we'll start from the outside going in, right? <laughs> that's what we'll do. We'll start from the outside going in before we talk about the stuff that happened inside uh so <clears throat> you want to see uh pov from lily stream for twitch things no no i've i, I do not know I, I hardly know who, who she is uh, uh i've only seen a couple of clips and the clips i saw were not very favorable for her so i don't know i don't know maybe i need to watch more of her stuff but i'm cool i got sweet anita i'm totally good i don't need any more i don't need to follow anybody else i'm done I'm done following anybody else. Sweet Anita is all I need now in my life. Um, Red Eye Monster. Hey, thank you so much. Got to turn off for the show. Thank you. All right. So TwitchCon, LineCon. Sorry. Sorry. LineCon. You guys, you guys heard about, you guys heard about LineCon, right? Was that something that you guys were familiar with? Um, you're lucky. <laughs> you're lucky Anita is not streaming right now. I know. I, dude, uh, I watched, I watched her last VOD. Last night I was watching her VOD. I was watching the... The, uh, so first off, you don't know, Sweet Anita is a, before we go on to this, uh, Sweet Anita is, um, uh, she has Tourette's and, uh, she is, uh, so like she, she just deals with it and she's super receptive to people asking her questions about her, uh, about her Tourette's and also her Tourette's are really like fucking creatively hilarious. It's like super interesting. It's like, wow, you never really get to experience, except for remember that guy uh, it was like, he was like YouTube famous for a while there. I can't remember his name, but he was like, uh, he was just like constantly he's like, fuck, fuck, fuck you, whatever. Like that was him, right? Her tics are not quite as extreme, uh, uh, as that, but they are, um, they are very creative. They are very, yeah, her, 
her her what is, her dick is on fire. She says, "My dick's on fire." But whoo, <laughs> like just a little whistle. Uh, anyways, yeah, really, really interesting, fascinating uh, to see how she just kind of deals with it. She, like she just she lives her life, plays plays Overwatch, and uh, tells people that uh, that uh, tells people she, she she plays with that that her disc dick's on fire and she'll fuck a biscuit. Don't don't she'll fuck a biscuit or something like that. So, uh, anyways, yeah, so that's sweet Anita. Um, back to TwitchCon. Back to TwitchCon. Uh, TwitchCon. I want a biscuit. Yes, exactly. Uh, TwitchCon is our uh, LineCon was um, uh, was was a real thing this year again, again. Uh, so last year, you guys probably remember uh the line that happened outside. They had like seven security booths, right? Like seven uh um uh, metal detectors and. There was like 58,000 people trying to get through the doors. So it was a lot of people trying to get through just seven metal detectors. It really didn't work out. So the line was huge and it was just a huge mess. Um, <clears throat> this year, the line to get in wasn't that bad. The line to get your ticket, to get your actual badge was crazy. Uh, I actually know somebody. So it wasn't like even like it was like, oh, word of mouth. I heard that so and so did. No, I know the person who went and got in line and four hours and ten minutes later got her badge. Um that was that was that was that's that's pretty fucking crazy. Um and so they they recognize this by the end of this is the end of the first day, 5 41 p.m. Uh, and they say the lines, the lines at TwitchCon did not hold up to the bar that we've set for the show. We're sorry. This is what we're going to do about it tonight. The show closes one hour later at 7 p.m. Friday only attendees come back for free on Saturday and registration opens one hour earlier on Saturday at 7 a.m. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it was a nightmare for non-partners. Yeah, it was. It was. there. there oh, uh, there was actually this is a real thing. There was somebody getting treated by medics who was standing in the fucking line. All right. So. So either that person had a panic attack or something for being around too many people, or they collapsed because they locked their knees and they were standing in line for so long they just fainted. So I'm gonna go ahead and go with the with the latter because that supports my narrative that the lines were really really long. So <clears throat> yeah, it was uh, it was a super super uh, super long line, and I feel for anybody that had to wait in it. Um, I did find a super long line for, to get in, and I tried to tweet that out to help people that had just gotten out of that crazy line to not have to wait in another line to get into the fucking show. Uh, and so hopefully that helped with folks, uh, uh, but, uh, yeah, there's always, there's always like side entrances and stuff like that. But this, this year, the entrances weren't necessarily the issue it was the badge pickup. That was a problem. Uh, and, and really like, this is not, man, this is just not an issue that we see in anywhere else. Like, I feel like of all the conventions, like occasionally we'll get a line at something, but I feel like. Every, like this is now like two consecutive years, and I wish I could remember what which what uh, three years ago was like. But this is now like two consecutive years that they've had line issues. So not to mention they also had issues with uh, uh, getting across the uh, yes, I'm going to seven dash. Uh, yeah, we're gonna get there. Um, <clears throat> uh, not to mention the the rules for entry were also a little bit fuzzy. Uh, you cannot have a backpack. You cannot take a backpack into TwitchCon, but if your backpack fits within the 18 inch by 12 inch dimensions, then you can. That kind of goes against the whole not going in with a backpack thing, right? So you can go in with a backpack if it's within a certain size, but you're not allowed to go in with a backpack. You guys follow? Follow me? Exactly, except when you can't. Um, <laughs> so what you can go in with though, if I can grab it here, you can go in with this or any other kind of sling bag. So what you do and what people were doing was they were taking their backpack and they were putting it inside of this bag. And that was how they were able to get past the line with their backpack. Um, it's fucking genius. <laughs> Oh, man. So, uh, in terms of, like, overall security, I don't know. I can't really comment on... I've heard stories about, like, security not being as good as it should be. Uh, or people not really paying attention or doing what they're supposed to be or whatever. Um, <clears throat> in terms of, like, security and everything. There was, uh, there was, there was a space outside the, uh, um, uh, in the back, uh, between the South Hall and the Main Hall. 
Uh, South Hall was the Fortnite area, which was amazing, uh, by the way. It was like a fucking theme park. Uh, there was a huge open area there and a lot of fence that was not necessarily well guarded. So I'm pretty sure there's a few people that were able to uh, slide in and out. But uh, they were checking badges going in and out of the uh, uh, in and out of the halls. So even if you made it into that room or into that uh, open area, you still had to find a way to get inside the building. So it wasn't necessarily like they were just someone could just jump the fence and just go. But um, but yeah, I mean, people brought backpacks. By the second day, everyone had fucking backpacks. It was just like, okay, well, I don't know. We'll see. But they did search backpacks. But by, by the way, it's, it's not like they just let you in. They didn't say, oh, you know what? That backpack looks good. You come in. No, they did search the backpacks. Uh, the reason for not wanting bags is sure it makes sense. Less easy to sneak things in. You shouldn't have, but you can take a different type of bag instead. Yeah, exactly. That's the biggest problem is that <clears throat> you can't you, know, you can't take a bag where you can take something as big as a bag as long as it isn't a backpack. That was they were very clear that that uh, you can't have backpacks, but you can. I don't know. It was fucking weird. Uh, it didn't make any sense. So, anyways, uh, they said that the lines didn't hold hold up to their standard, and so they went ahead and uh, extended it out uh, um, uh, for a day. This doesn't help everybody, obviously. Like, if you're a Friday-only attendee, you probably don't have uh, hotel accommodations for the next day. So you still end up asked out, unfortunately, in that regard. Um, <clears throat> even this top comment here says, how about refunding people the, the $200 that they pay to stand in line for over six hours in the heat? Seriously. Um, yeah, I mean, it's that's, that's I mean, $200 to stand in line. I mean, you still have two more days to go, but whatever. Uh, <clears throat> but, yo, yeah, so that's that's pretty much the gist with, uh, with LineCon. Next year, they really have to, next year, they have to not have line issues, period. They just have to. They have to not have line issues. They, they can't, they can't have line issues every fucking year. They just can't do it. Uh, a couple of weird things that came up during TwitchCon. What this is this? Oh, I got some silica gel that, that was, uh, that, oh, it must have fallen out of the bag. Oh, gosh. Yeah, okay, well, do I need this? Don't need that. Um, <clears throat> a couple of, like, strange things that came up. Uh, you guys probably saw this one. This actually, thankfully, somebody uh, pointed this out before the stream, and I was able to grab it real quick. Uh, this is during the developers uh, discussion that they had of the first day, first day of the convention. <clears throat> Sorry, my voice is like all cracked because it's been it's been a weekend of drinking. Um, uh, so this was uh, uh, basically a clip from uh, from basically kind of I think it's just kind of like off the cuff comment. I don't think it's necessarily real, but still, a lot of people were just kind of like, really, dude. Uh, so here we go. Functionality into extensions that will power a whole range of new interactive experiences. And looking ahead, we'd like to see some new things, new ways to interact on your streams. There's just so much stuff that hasn't been built yet. Can you imagine a dating app? That would be kind of cool. Having a dating app on Twitch or even a virtual girlfriend, boyfriend simulator, that'd be pretty funny. I think that there's so many things you could do up functionality into extensions that will power a whole range uh, of new- Yeah. No. No, I don't think so. Uh, I, I lost chat. If I look over, I lost chat. For some reason, my, my Twitch dashboard just like changed completely to the customer service area and I just totally lost chat. That's really weird. Hold on, let me get back to you guys. I got. I, I need you guys to function here. My co-host, I lost my co-host. Uh, anyways, yeah, so uh, so when I saw this clip, I was like, thank God it was a woman that made that comment because if that was a dude that made that comment, oh my God, it was, she would have blown right up. It'd been like, this guy is so out of touch and everything, but it was fine, it was just a woman, she just said something silly. Uh, <laughs> but no, it is, uh, it's just, it, they're just talking about stuff and that was such a silly comment that just, she, oh, you imagine, a, you imagine a dating, a dating app? Uh, in this thing, it's like, no, actually, there's like, that's not at all what should happen. Uh, but obviously, a lot of people picked it up and just kind of like, no, we should not do this. No, no, this should not at all. Uh, th she's just talking about all the different uh, functionality that you can add on using extensions and everything. So, so yeah, that's cool. Wow, we have the technology to create a dating app, like, in inside of Twitch itself. That's fucking awesome. Uh, but uh, what is the saying? It's like, you, you, you didn't stop to think, you, you're so focused on uh, that you can, you didn't think that if you should or something, right? Uh, yeah, that's pretty much where this falls uh, under. <clears throat> so, <laughs> oh man. Uh, speaking of like things people say on uh, at TwitchCon, maybe you guys saw this one. Uh, this was, uh, so they had a panel, and the name of the panel was, uh, if you don't mind, I'm gonna actually go and pull up the name of the panel, because I feel like that's, that's a super important part of this, uh, uh, of this, uh, setup here. The name of the panel, <clears throat> let's see, was The Professional Streaming Mindset, an introduction, an interactive discussion. It was a, um, it was a discussion about just being an interactive, being interactive with chat and everything. 
kind of like what we're doing, kind of like this, right? It's kind of this talks about like how how do you grow your community? Uh, how do you interact with your users and everything? Uh, I'm gonna play. I'm gonna play the 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 whole thing, a whole because it really is like if you hear about this, you're like when you hear about this story, you're like there's no way this isn't talked up. Then you then you watch the clip and you're like wow, it really is, <laughs> it really is exact. It lived up to the hype. All right, so we're gonna play the whole thing for you guys here. Let's go. Let's go full screen here. Let's go like this. There we go. When I look for streamers that I I want to relate to them. I want them to be witty. I want them to be cool. I want them to have that unique aspect that all of us strive to have. Um, but I need there to be a little bit of a relationship because I don't want to talk to a fucking wall. Okay, okay, but well, part of the thing for me is is I specifically don't want my viewers to have any kind of relationship with fair. me. So like that's like it kind of works out, right? Yeah. I'm kind of like I'm hitting my goal. But um, <laughs> <laughs> no, you totally are. No, and, and, yeah. And as weird as that sounds, and it's like. It's kind of like low key, like God complex kind of thing. Is I yeah. don't feel like many of my viewers should relate themselves to me because, and this is like super, like kind of like, I, God comp, like kind of yeah. weird. <laughs> is like I do think of myself as better than, or okay. not better, but like bigger. Uh, this is going sideways. There's, no, there's no good way to say this. I think of myself as like <laughs> above the average person, so I don't feel like many people could relate to me. As like bad as that sounds, I know, but like that's just. When I look for Dude. streamers. That <clears throat> right about here. It's like super like kind of like, watch watch like, watch bike God comp like kind of weird <laughs> is like I do think of myself as better than or okay. not better But like bigger uh, this is going there's, no, there's no good way to say this. I think of myself as like, above <laughs> the average person, so. <laughs> Oh man, oh no, so yeah, dude bikes was bikes reaction was so perfect. Just I'm so glad so this is this is real, man. Like this is a this is a real streamer that uh that got up there and uh decided to say that he is um hashtag low key god complex, but I don't want a relationship with my with my streamers, uh or with my with my viewers. <clears throat> Obviously, this was picked up by everybody. Yes, exactly, exactly, guns. He's not partnered. I know. I, I don't want to like talk shit about the guy specifically because I don't want to necessarily like put myself on his level, right? But I do think it's fair to point out. I do think it's fair to point out that he is an affiliate uh, because they wanted to have an affiliate on the panel to kind of be like the middle ground between a partner and uh, and somebody who's a viewer to show that or somebody that's just starting out streaming. And so they wanted to show that here are the different stages that you could get to, right? So that's why they had a partner. That's why they had an affiliate. They just didn't fucking vet anything here. Uh, even on his channel. Even on his channel. He says he doesn't want to have, uh, he doesn't want to uh, have any kind of relations or whatever uh, <laughs> with, uh, with them. Actually, I'll pull up his channel right now so you guys we can take a look at it here. Um, let me see. Oh gosh, oh god, he's playing an ad or something. He's hosting somebody. Uh, so here we go. Here's his actual channel here. Uh, it says, can you, can I, can I call you Michael? No, you call me Dust, uh, or Mr. Streamer. How old are you? 21. Uh, why are you playing the game that language as fast or whatever? It says, do you do giveaways? Leave my channel. Uh, sub perks. You can use my emotes. That's it. No sub, no sub games, no sub discord, no movie nights. I don't want to play games with you. I don't want to hang out with you on your discord. Uh, leave me alone. So this is what he said. Uh, obviously, we pulled up his, his his stats. Of course, we pulled up his stats. Uh, he averages uh, this past thirty days twenty two viewers is average. He had a couple of peaks here where he hits uh, one hundred fourteen, uh, eighty nine, and ninety eight. But on the for the for the most part, he averages about uh, like it says 20, 22 viewers. Um, <clears throat> he is a speedrunner. And, uh, uh, which that's completely irrelevant just so you get some background on what kind of partner he is or what he does. He does, uh, speed running. Um, but, uh, I don't feel like anything here really, really justifies the ego. Uh, I don't feel like at any point you really, uh, are justified, uh, in ego, uh, when it comes to this. Because what we do is quite literally get up here and entertain you all, uh, and hope that you give us money. That is our fucking job. Uh, and anybody that thinks otherwise is just, it's, it's being ridiculous. And this guy definitely thinks... Uh, thinks that he is above uh, other people when again uh, it's part of it's part of what we do is we we stream we enjoy ourselves we try to be entertaining and we hope we hope that we can continue doing this but the only way we can continue doing it uh, is with your guys' support 
Uh, and that's the part that he is leaving out. He thinks that he's going to build a community off of uh, off of basically being this uh, this unreached, you know, un unattainable god complex, whatever. Um, the thing I was anyone will tell you about is to keep your viewers is to interact with it. Yes, exactly, exactly. And so that's the thing. It's like this. This is again, like I said, the professional streaming mindset and interactive discussion. Like it really is about <laughs> about being interactive and he's telling you he's like i don't want to i can't i can't i just can't i can't um, i'm better than you I'm, i don't know i don't understand and then bike just basically his face his face pretty much said it all i was i was i didn't see the rest i didn't see the rest of this but but uh judy chop tv uh i had i had, a, I had lunch with him um i had a couple beers with them uh, on uh, saturday saturday yeah i think saturday uh he was there him and his buddy were there and uh yeah you guys can call me mr akami kebiser um uh, he was actually at this this thing and he said that the entire the entire panel was like this with him he was only giving like one or two word responses uh and he just was not you know everybody else was fine uh but uh but yeah it was it, this is this is this this was not a good look for twitch um the fact that somebody who again on his channel says he doesn't want to interact with people is on a panel about interacting with people that says a lot about uh about how twitch uh sets up these these panels so uh so yeah it is uh it's a bad look it's, it's a real bad look for twitch it really 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 is a bad look for twitch um he's gonna drag my face through some broken glass it's pretty bad it's pretty bad i, I would have put anyone up there Anyone else? I, I can't. I, I can't think of anybody who would say something like that. And so I feel like because of that, we could just throw anybody else up there, and that wouldn't have happened. Uh, I'm not here to talk to you, hang with you, care about you. Please give me money. Hey, thanks. Yes, exactly, exactly. Bike gave good answers on the panel. Yeah, I heard. Yeah, yeah. I, I have every, uh, every, every vote of confidence that uh, that uh, Bike handled himself well on the panel, considering who he was sitting next to. Uh, so I, I haven't gone back and watched the panel myself, but I did hear that the that the entirety of it uh, outside of obviously, uh, um, well, <laughs> on the left and the right of this panel was great. Uh, somewhere in the middle, things got lost though. Uh, oh, yeah, hey, thank you so much for that. Alerts turned off for the show. But you know, I love you. Thank you so much. Um, a brown paper bag with a balloon in it would have been better. Yeah, it probably would have been. Bike man probably looked like a shining star in comparison. Yeah, no, it was, uh, I, 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 again, I should probably go back and watch the whole thing, but I don't know if I can, I can suffer through that kind of a train wreck for an hour, but, uh, yeah, it, what I hear is pretty bad. The fortunate thing here is that Dust is a friend of Brandon's. He's an excellent smite player and former pro like Brandon. His personality definitely needs work. Yeah, so, when you, had Mike on his how to deal with a troll, I know, uh, when when you when you submit these ideas for panels, you basically you get an email and it says you know do you want do you have any ideas for panels? Uh, submit them, and so they're all user submitted. So this this is this is Twitch's idea of let's let's have everybody um, uh, let's have the community come up with the panels so that way we can uh, uh, so that way it's it's the, the things that people really care about. It doesn't make sense for Twitch to sit there and create all the panels and then populate them because they don't they're not going to be in touch with every every uh, every aspect of the site. They're just not going to because they don't use the site as often as as we do. Uh, and so it makes sense to pull those suggestions from folks. Uh, unfortunately, there was no vetting obviously that happened. There was zero vetting. Zero, zero. Like 100% confidence. Nobody vetted these users uh these uh these, these panelists because uh, uh it says right there on his page that he does not interact with his users. So, there you go. Um, I have friends that do some other people or my family. Mr. Streamer is a good example. <laughs> Mr. Streamer, you can call me Mr. Streamer. Ah, oh, man, 0 0.075 vetting, absolutely. So that was the uh, that was like the big, that was the big like what the f that came out of uh, TwitchCon. Uh, but there are a couple other things I found to be kind of interesting. Uh, one of them was, and this is just a small segment, but this is uh, uh, Disguised Toast, and he's talking a little bit about uh, withers. Thank you so much. Alerts turned off, but I appreciate it. Um, I just, I mean, I, I still acknowledge, but it's fine. Uh, <laughs> I should just ignore you guys. Uh, let's see. So this is, uh, this is a, this, this panel, this particular panel, uh, they were just discussing like getting started on Twitch and doing all this stuff. Um, and so in this case, in, in this particular segment, uh, Toast is talking about, and, and there are, there should be, um, there's actually more to this and I'll, 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 uh, uh, 
I'll, I'll talk about it in a, in a second, but I want to play this clip for you guys here. It's only 38 seconds, so so it's okay. It won't take long. Here we hey, go. Man, like, <laughs> realistically, even though we shouldn't promote this, doing something really stupid is also a way to get attention, something dangerous. I would never recommend doing something dangerous or stupid or illegal, but you guys know that some of the most popular streamers are known for doing something stupid or like being racist or sexist. Now, does that mean you should become a sexist or a racist? No. But we live in a real world where entertainment comes in all forms, and one of the best forms of entertainment is like watching a train wreck in front of you happen. <laughs> Something really like appalling and offensive, but it gets views, right? So, like, so, realistically, so let me let me let me let me bracket this. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I got I, I bookend it. Let me bookend this. This is important. All right. So this this question, uh, this this segment. I mean, it's not all good. <laughs> it's not all good. Uh, obviously, what he said is kind of like, oh, God, don't say that stuff. But he was talking about getting started on another platform, doing something stupid to generate uh, to generate your um, uh, uh, your 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 following and then bring that following over to Twitch, which is still I mean, it's still it's not it's not a great thing. Right. But he, he's he is as, as as a commentary perspective. He's not wrong. From a content perspective, he's, he's not incorrect at all. Uh, we've had plenty of people on Twitch and on YouTube that uh, that they just they they get their viewership from uh, uh, from people that are looking for train wrecks, basically. So I mean, he's not he's not incorrect in that regard. Uh, <clears throat> you just don't want to like necessarily say it, uh, but but in this in this panel though, they didn't in, in this panel they didn't necessarily uh, and in other panels before right here. Uh, they didn't necessarily make it seem like, hey, you should stream. Like, you should get started on Twitch. They made it seem like you can't get started on Twitch uh, unless you uh, in, unless you go somewhere else and do something stupid and then come back. Uh, and I feel like that's really, really off message for Twitch to tell people, uh, you know, I mean, obviously, obviously, this they don't work for Twitch directly, but still... Uh, <laughs> You still, yeah, you still can't necessarily uh, uh, tell people at TwitchCon that you can't get started on Twitch and be successful because that is that is not true. That is not true. Uh, are there thousands of people starting on Twitch every day? Yes. Are the odds against you? Sure. Right. But but uh, there is nothing wrong with having a successful small community um, to help you to you know as, as part of your uh uh your streaming career there's a difference between the truth and the right answer to give yes exactly yes that's true uh go to your stupid shit where we have no liability and then bring your lovely ad revenue over to us yeah that's pretty much it uh, but keep in mind he doesn't work for twitch right i make sure that clear like, none of these folks work for twitch uh, uh it, i don't know if in any capacity maybe they didn't work for them in the past but they don't they're not employees or streamers um Twitch has no idea what they're doing with panels and need to really rethink what they're doing with them if they want their, what they want their intent to be. Yes. Yeah. So what we could, yeah, what we could derive from this is that Twitch really needs to take another look at how, how they structure these panels and how they uh, screen them. Um, they just, they need somebody to basically sit down with them and just be like, Hey, you know, what do we, you know, maybe avoid talking about things or maybe not tell people that you can't start on Twitch. That's probably a, a big thing. Uh, you know, maybe tell people that you, that you like to interact with them. <laughs> No, like I feel like there's a way to filter these things. It's not my job to figure out how they want to do it, but it, but it, I will take it as my job to uh, point out that it needs to be done uh, because because clearly, clearly, clearly it needs to be done. Uh, maybe they just told them to be honest. Oh man, maybe maybe they did. Maybe they did. But uh, but still, you know, there's this is not that. But this is not as bad as the God Complex guy, of course. But um, but still, definitely didn't. Uh, doesn't come across the, the way it should come come out across the way it should have. Um, so yeah, so that is uh, that is actually the majority of the stuff that I have on TwitchCon, right? Yeah, wow, a lot. That was a lot. The God Comes guy was telling the truth, his truth. Yeah, his truth, his truth. There's 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 a certain level. I feel like. Uh, I feel like he's confusing vanity with his God complex thing. Uh, there is a certain level of vanity that you, that, that, that streamers, you know, have, and it's something that helps them to be able to do what they do. You know, like, uh, I have, I have, I have a camera up full screen with my face on it from, from here to here. There's a certain level of vanity that tells me in my brain, 
I can do this comfortably, right? So like, but that's not the same as saying nobody else can do it, right? That's that's those are different things. That's something that I feel like uh, Mr. Mm Dust uh, uh, or Mr. Streamer uh, is failing to uh, to to really connect there. Um, so yeah, what are, what are your guys like favorite things? Like like you, that I mean, out of everything we talked about, besides the the God Complex guy, what is it? What is like the the favorite thing that you guys got out of uh, uh, that you saw from? Uh, from TwitchCon. We have other stuff to talk about. We're going to get to that in a second, but uh, but still, let's wrap this up. The highlighting changes. Yeah, the highlighting changes is huge. Yeah, that's going to be great. One simple edit is all it takes to really change the dynamic of a clip, of one clip. It becomes a package. Larry's thank you so much. You're so vain. You probably think this sub is about you. That's fucking funny. I wish I could just let that one through. Thank you so much, dude. Uh, even if that guy does get big, he'll always be uh, Mr. Streamer now. Yeah, the dating app, the mixer thing. Yeah, the mixer thing was great. Uh, seeing friends meet and hang out. Yeah, let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah, we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, the multi-stream thing. See, wow, so this is a lot of good stuff. The thing is, though, it probably does help to get this kind of issue discussed. So as horrible as it was, these two things happen, it does allow for the topics we talked about. That's true. That's true. Yeah, get, get it out there. You know, somebody, someone's got to say it. I, I, I don't have anything really against what uh, uh, Disguised Toast said. Is he still di Disguised Toast? Because I feel like it, he's, we know who it is, so it's not really that much of a disguise. Uh, but yeah, I don't really have that much against what he said in the context of what he said. Uh, I just feel like on for Twitch, it's very off message for what they want to promote. Um, but but yeah. <laughs> uh, squad mode. Yeah, squad mode is great. Uh, uh, the streamer IRL Denny's meetup. I saw a clip of that, actually. Not a clip, but I saw like, I just tuned in and I saw some of that. Uh, very part when all the streamers I watch go back to stream. Yeah. Uh, it's good to talk about the correct critical thinking setting. Absolutely. Still the same. Oh, wait, I group streamed uh, the uh, a party last night in squad mode. It would be awesome to share views, so to speak. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. If you do, like, IRL stream with a couple other people, that'd be fucking sick, actually. That'd be a great way of doing it. Oh, my God. That's, like, like you you could be your own switch room for, like, uh, uh, going through and changing feeds. It's like, oh, camera two, camera three. Man, that'd be fucking great. Um, Soda Pop and Amaranth and Andy Milanaka stream at Okay, cool. Wow, apparently some stuff happened there, huh? Um, I saw, I just saw, like, a piece of it or something, but I didn't necessarily see, uh, I didn't stay tuned in for the whole thing. I was just kind of like, they're going to sit down and eat, and they're probably going to talk, and that's pretty much it, and I left. Uh... So yeah, uh, let's see. Oh yeah, Josh did a panel. Josh did a panel. It was pretty good. Um, I I I I think I watched almost the whole thing. Uh, it's not it's not a subject I really care much about the whole RP thing and creating a character and all that stuff. But uh, I felt it was kind of it was kind of cool for them to get up there, and I feel like they uh, they they handled that pretty well. <clears throat> that was a lot. A lot of times, you know, these these panels they kind of get weird because uh, there sometimes there's not necessarily like a leader. It's just kind of like, hey, here's four people to talk about this thing. And somebody's got to be like, oh, I guess I'll step up and like lead this thing and introduce introduce everybody and all that. Uh, and so you don't necessarily get um, people who are used to hosting things, not necessarily just hosting other people, uh, but also like being in front of a crowd and doing all that. Like that's, that's, a, that's, that's a big difference. There's a big difference between talking to a camera and then talking to like a group of people. Uh, and then also a camera on top of it. So there's a couple of awkward moments and stuff where you have people on stage who don't necessarily belong on stage. Uh, and so you'd have to just set that stuff aside and just kind of be like, yeah, you know what? You're nervous as fuck. We get it. We get it. It's totally fine. Um, I just hung out and drove people around. Yeah. So, so that was, uh, let's talk a little bit about, uh, what I did, which was, I mean, really it's not a whole lot. It was just like, we went, we went to the floor, walked around, uh, in terms of like, uh, actual layout of TwitchCon, let me see if I can find a map of TwitchCon. So TwitchCon, uh, cause this is pretty important, I feel like to mention, uh, TwitchCon 20, if anything, just for archival purposes. So later on, uh, we can, uh, uh next year we can come back to this and be like, man, what the hell happened here? Uh, let's see, D -d 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 schedule sessions, event at a glance, who's coming resources. I know on the phone you have a map. I don't necessarily see a map online. Hmm, sessions. Uh, yeah, I don't see a map online of the actual. Huh, is there not, do they, have, do they not put the map online for like security reasons or something? I wonder. Who's coming, resources, blog, fat FAQ. What is a Twitch con? What can I do? Here's where I'm at right now, so you can see it. Uh, let's see, updated, let's see. Da -da -da -da. Tickets, 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 safety and security. Uh, well, man, camera artist alley. Well, shit. All right. <laughs> well, all right then. Uh, yeah. So let's go ahead and uh, so we'll just we'll just talk about it. So, um, 
Artist Alley was huge. Art, I mean, huge in terms of popularity. It was not huge in regards to uh, the uh, uh, the layout of uh, uh, or the necessary room that they needed to host all these people. There is a lot of really talented artists that were crammed into like the side room. Uh, <clears throat> the side room uh, was just it was just packed. It was just there was so many people. Uh, trying to buy art and everything, which is great. I mean, like the art, I mean, the artist stuff, I mean, those people are crazy talented. Uh, oh, Digi, my hero. Woo woo. Is that what it is? Uh, is that? No. No, this is not it. This does not look correct at all. That's the party. Oh, that's the party. Oh, okay, 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 okay. I'll just say like, wow, that is uh, here. Hero status revoked. No more VIP for you. Done. <laughs> uh, anyways, yeah, Buddhist man. No, no. Thank you for the effort. I appreciate it. Um, no. So, uh, Artist Alley was was way, way, way smaller than than it needed to be. Uh, hopefully next year they give they give them a little bit more room, a little more breathing room, really just need space in between the aisle, in the aisles themselves, because people will stand around in like layers and look at whatever, uh, whatever booths they're, they're, they're looking at for the art and everything. So there's like three layers of people. And if you have a room, like just enough room for like six wide, then there's no room to actually walk around. So they really need to, uh, uh, expand that area out a little bit more and make more room for, uh, for, for the artists. They, they deserve it. Those people can actually like look at their art. Um, <clears throat> also the meet and greet was in a really fucked up area, I feel. And this is actually something that VidCon does a little bit better. Um, VidCon, which is the YouTube convention, uh, VidCon, uh, the ones I've been to, one I've been to, maybe twice, I think I went to two of them, uh, VidCon has their meet and greets in plain view of the main floor. And here at TwitchCon, the meet and greet was off the main floor behind the, uh, I want to say it was like behind the artist section, I think maybe. Uh, so if you didn't know that your favorite streamer was at the meet and greet, at that time, you wouldn't, you wouldn't go over there. And so every time I walked by, I felt the lines are pretty lackluster for like the smaller streamers. Uh, and by smaller streamers, I mean people that were uh, much bigger than, than my channel. And I was surprised. I was like, wow, that, that's just, that's not a lot of people. And the reason why is because if you have the meet and greet somewhere where the main area, hall area, can actually see the uh, who's there, you're going to have people that walk by and they're going to be like, oh, shit, Mike B is here. Yeah, I, I didn't even know he was having a meet and greet because I don't follow him on social media, but I watch his stream. Uh, which is, that's a thing that people do. Uh, and so they'll be like, oh shit, I should go over there and say hi. And so, but that's not going to happen if you take the meet and greet and you tuck it all the way away. So really what I feel like they need to do is ditch some of the garbage they had on the main floor, which there's not a lot of garbage, but uh, I feel like there's a lot of space. There was a lot of open space and uh, find a way to, to pull in the meet and greet and also uh, pull in um, the, uh, uh, pull in uh, the, the artist alley or expand on that. A little bit more. I saw a ton of streamers having more than one meet and greets, like a sponsored booth or a nearby parks restaurant. Definitely wasn't a good meet and greet area. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Mike Beezer, why is no one? Yeah, I, you know, I, I looked at that and I was just like, man, I couldn't have a meet and greet. Like, like especially back here. Like, <laughs> like Jesus Christ, there's no way that happened. Um, tucked away in the corner. Hey guys, I'm back here. Come follow me to my line. <laughs> it just wouldn't work out. Uh, yeah, so hopefully they, they look at these and they make some changes and everything. Um, uh, for next year, but you know, this is the what like third year, fourth year, fourth year TwitchCon, I think. So they're, uh, you know, hopefully all this experience would just make it better and better. I mean, BlizzCon was rough for the first few years, but uh, wasn't. I don't, I don't really feel like they went through some of their. I, they had their growing pains here and there, but uh, I don't feel like it was quite as bad as like LineCon. Jesus Christ, uh, probably social media blowing it up. Really, you just need a huge Darnell face as your poster. People come flocking. I know. I should. Jeez. Four times a charm, exactly. <clears throat> uh, other than that, though, like we ended up, um, um, uh, San Pedro Square was a, a, a kind of like a bar, like, uh, food court area that's not too far from the main area. And I spent a lot of time there, just like just hanging out with people and just, just eating and just drinking pretty much the entire time. I was full on beer. I, I am not a beer guy. Um, but I'll drink it if it's there. And as somebody who does not drink a lot of alcohol, uh, anymore, it didn't take a whole lot to get me loosened up. 
And so <laughs> I wasn't like drunk or anything, uh, but uh, still, I was like, I even like Sunday morning uh, when I hadn't you know, drank since like the night before, I was still like, I was still like full of beers, ridiculous, um, which is a good thing, I guess. Um, but anyways, yeah, so I spent a lot of time there, hung out with a bunch of great folks. Uh, some of you guys actually, and uh, it was white girl wasted. No, do people from DE recognize you at TwitchCon? No, I no because uh, the people that I didn't go, I didn't end up going to the Warframe party because the people that uh, um, that were uh, there, I didn't know. Who, I didn't, I didn't know them. Um, <clears throat> like it wasn't the people that I had talked to like directly in the past. Uh, it was, uh, it was uh, other folks, and so I was like, man, eh, probably does not go. Uh, but we ended up like all crap. Actually, we ended up coming to my house. <laughs> It was, it was like, it was like people that I've, you know, like my mods, uh, and people that I've known personally, uh, I wasn't as inviting random ass people, but, uh, but Casper, you could have came if you went, man, jeez, but no, no, we ended up just, uh, coming here and just, uh, hanging out by the, uh, the fire in the background, in the backyard and, and doing all that stuff. I did all, I also was home for the longest world series game of all time. That was awesome. Up to like one, two o'clock in the morning, waiting for that to finish. Really, really intoxicated. Uh, you can always talk to uh, co-op Warframe stuff. Just say you know me. Oh, okay. All right. I'll drop that. Um, glad I missed that game though. Yeah, the game was that game was legendary. I'm so glad I, I got a chance to watch that. It was like it was. So what you do is like when you go to convention, you go harder than you rest, then you go harder than you rest, and that's pretty much what I did, right? So I was like, go harder than rest, and that's what just happens. The rest night was was the night of the game, uh, and I ended up not resting. <laughs> it's like stayed up all night and watched that with the with people um too bad I, I did fall asleep for c9 and they fucking lost because i fell asleep because i fell asleep they needed my energy i i couldn't give it to them while i was passed out jen said i was sleeping i was uh, she said i was sleeping like this like i was like crunched up into a ball or something like that i was trying to get comfortable but yeah yeah it's my fault it's my fault it's my fault um God, hey, hey, well, they're the first NA to make it to semifinals, so I'm I'm proud of them for making it this far. Um, despite all of the early season uh, uh, flack that Jack got, you know, the whole hashtag, not my C9. If you're not familiar, I'm not going to explain it, but yeah. Uh, still, still, still. Let's move on to the last thing I have here tonight, because this is actually pretty important. It's not Twitch related, but I do want to squeeze it in because, again, I do feel like it's kind of important for some of you guys. You guys would be kind of interested in knowing uh, that this is a thing, so... The DMCA uh, rules and exemptions are, are, are uh, actually uh, changed every three years or uh, amended or whatever every three years uh, based on uh, and the library library of Congress is the ones that who basically make those changes based off of uh, people writing in. So it's not there's no like congressional stuff or anything that happens anymore. The congressional stuff ended in like 2005, I think, or something. I can't remember when, uh, which is basically the congressional element was. The Library of Congress is in charge of this. They can handle it. Because if Congress was in charge of it, then we would never get anything done. And the things that did change would not be in consumer favor. So thank God for the Library of Congress. <laughs> so um, they're the ones that basically change the rules every three every three years or so. They revisit and make rule changes and everything. Uh, and one of the major rules that they changed, uh, and if I get this, is a, this is a pretty long readout here. Uh, and not to mention, I also have the actual PDF, and I went through this fucking thing, I seriously read through a huge chunk of this thing to find uh, uh, information that I felt was relevant to us. Uh, and I'm actually gonna pull that right now, see, 59, page 59, here we go. So first off, uh, some of the, the high level stuff uh, is about jailbreaking. You can now jailbreak Alexa powered hardware and other similar gadgets, they call these voice assistant devices. Um, uh, you can unlock new phones, you can, uh, we get a general exemption for a repair of smartphones, home appliances, or home systems. By the way, the majority of these changes uh, for software stuff were actually, <clears throat> were actually uh, implemented by, uh, or pushed by farmers. Because, like, John Deere, John Deere tractors, which costs like $250,000, uh, they, when they break down, they have like a, a proprietary software or something to help diagnose or whatever. And that costs like thousands of dollars. And so what farmers were doing was they were hacking their shit in order to fix their own, their own stuff. And yes, yes, exactly. Never piss off farmers. Now <laughs> you just don't, just don't do it. Uh, this is this this is that that was a huge deal to them. And so they ended up getting it. Uh, uh, 
added to the rules change saying that they can go through repair of motorized land vehicles, including tractors, by modifying software is now legal. Importantly, this includes access to telematic uh, diagnostic data, which was a major point of conten contention. Yes, hacking their 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 tra their tra their uh, uh, tractors. It's fucking great. Uh, <laughs> it is now legal for third parties to perform repair on behalf of the owner. This is hugely important for the American economy, where repair jobs represent three percent of overall employment. Uh, so these are all these are all like really really good good things. Uh, the ruling was not without some bad news. Uh, our game console repair petition was denied, meaning repairs of the PS4 and Xbox One systems are going to stay expensive. Products that are not smartphones, home appliances, or home systems, uh, or motorized vehicles are excluded. So that means boats, planes, stuff like that, jet skis. Uh, those are not going to be uh, included. So for those of you guys who are looking to firmware hack your jet ski, um, which I, I, I feel like is just as ridiculous sounding as saying firmware hack your, your tractor. Uh, but that got approved. So there you go. Is there is there a... a um, a coalition of Sea-Doo uh, writers that they can get together and push for this for the, in the next three years to get that thing changed? I don't know. We'll see. Uh, an exception request by um, by Bunny Hong and EFF to bypass HTCP copyright protection. So there you go. Uh, <clears throat> the argument is that for some things, you can buy them and hack them to repair them. For other things, you can't because of money. Yes. But there's even more. There's even more. This other part is pretty expensive. Or pretty expensive. This is pretty uh, important. This is pretty important. This is why I had to re I had to read this fucking thing in order to find the goddamn thing. Um, so, you guys ever play a game that requires some kind of online authorization, even though you're playing offline? You guys ever play? It? You guys ever game like that? Like every game on Steam, right? You could play it offline, but you know they still they still have the online you know thing. Yeah, yeah, online. It doesn't have to be an online game. Not an online game. Diablo 3 is a great example of that, right? When it first came out? Yeah. Uh, yes. So, so if, if the uh, authentication servers uh, are no longer supported, then as of, as of this, this write up here, right? Um, you can go through and, uh, uh, and basically hack your stuff, patch your stuff uh, in order to make it function. As long as you make it function to the uh the original specifications so this is this is not this is not saying you can mod your game and change it to something else you want uh this is just modding it so that you can play it to its original specifications they primarily point out sorry i should probably should say this uh it is for single player games Okay, I'm sorry. I should have. I should have started with that. I should have started with that. That part's pretty important. Single player. Oh, the collective side. Yeah, I can already hear it coming. Oh, damn. I know. I know. I know. I know. Um, no, the online online portion of it uh, is not supported. But there are some word. There's some wording in here that's actually kind of. It kind of teeters on like if the official servers are not there and you need it, what you could kind of do. I don't know, but. But anyways, the important parts here, let me see if I can remember where the important parts here and read some of those for you. So, uh, video games in the form of computer programs embodied in physical or downloaded formats have been lawfully acquired as complete games. Now that's really important. It has been acquired as a complete game. This, this is where they're able to basically, uh, uh, X out, you know, online multiplayer games because you download, you don't download WoW and it functions as a complete game without necessarily needing the online components. Um... When the copyright owner or its authorized representative has ceased to provide access to an external computer server necessary to facilitate an authentication process to enable gameplay solely for the purpose of, and it says permitting access to the video game to allow copying modifications of the computer program uh, and restore access to the game for personal local gameplay on a personal computer or video game console. <clears throat> um, example of uh, games this will work for? You know, I wish I could tell you. I wish I, I wish I could... Uh, give you an example. I, I understand the ruling here, but I don't necessarily uh, I couldn't necessarily think of a game that required online for authentication, uh, but not necessarily um, uh, the uh, uh, the online components. This is more like future proofing pretty much, assuming it doesn't get changed. Um, Premium access to the video game allow copying and modification of the server of, of the computer program to restore access to the game on a personal computer or video game console not necessary to allow the preservation of the game in a playable form for an eligible library, archives, or museum where such activities are carried out without any purpose of direct or indirect commercial advantage and the video game is not distributed or made available uh, outside of the physical premises of the eligible library. So this is basically one of the arguments was we need to be able to uh, uh, bring up a game that 
previously required some kind of online authentic uh, authentication and have it available so that future game developers can reference it and play it to kind of get an idea of how games functioned during that period. And now that like every game, now that like every game has some kind of online authorization, uh, this will essentially free that up. Um, <clears throat> so like, yeah, so Valve were to go, Valve were to go poof, it lets us hack, uh, yeah, it's exactly what it does, Gat. So, you know, that's the best example right there. If Valve disappears, and that DRM just disappears entirely. We we would be legally allowed with this uh, protected for uh, uh, unlocking your game so that you can play it the way it was originally intended, as long as it was a, a single player game uh, and wholly downloaded. Uh, games like Trials might be a little bit a little bit tricky uh, because there's an online component. Uh, but I feel like you could probably get away with it if you can make an argument and say, well, the online component doesn't work because I set this thing up just so I can play the game by myself. Uh, and as long as you're not hosting servers or anything like that. Uh, what are the game studio closed down? Well, that's what you would actually go through and uh, and get somebody to hack together a patch or something for you. Um, see, uh, video games. See, there's, there's actually a couple of interesting comments here. Uh, the, what was it? Market, market. It was like two pages back. Uh, da -da -da. Yeah, so it says the record indicated that an exemption would be in, would enable future scholarship by uh, enabling researchers to experience games as they originally played and thereby better understand their design or construction. So that was the big pushing point here. Putting out games, for example, uh, which needed in the later games online services, but they were... Sh oh, yeah, actually the Xbox servers for like uh, Dirt, I think. Like Dirt 2, I feel like, has like a... Uh, uh, some kind of component where you can't authorize it depending on how you purchase the game. Um... There was some wording in here where they said substitute market. Uh, I don't think I could type in market and find it, unfortunately. Opponents said uh, expansion arguing that opponents intended use of video games is not true preservation use. Instead, opponents, here you go. This is it. Uh, yes, here it is. So instead, opponents to the changes contended that uh, proponents wish to engage in recreational play that could function as a market substitute. That sentence right there. Now, maybe, maybe I'm reading it wrong, but it sounds to me like what they're saying is we don't want people to fix these old games because then they won't go out and buy new ones. I'll read it again. Instead, opponents contended that, uh, that proponents wish to engage in recreational play that could function as a market substitute. Uh, so no, we don't want you to be able to fix your old games because then you won't buy our new games we're trying to serve to you. Like the remaster of that title that you're trying to hack together so you could play. Yeah, we have a remaster right here. Why, why don't you just buy the remaster? Uh, yeah, there's some pretty shitty stuff when you read this. Uh, when the, e the Well, the ESA, uh, the Electronic uh, uh, the, the Entertainment Software uh, Association. Um, obviously, they, they don't want anybody to be able to have any access to uh, they're like apple in that regard they don't want people to be able to fix their old games no 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 um let's see uh overall opponents contend that the proposals uses are infringing opponents also objected to the use of affiliate archives containing yeah we read that part already so Woo, man so this is a pretty important one i feel this is uh, uh all these links will be available in the link dump below but uh um yeah if you want to go through and read it yourself and check it out Great. Uh, there are some great changes in here for the uh, for the future. It's a, st it's a step in the right direction. Uh, games for Windows. There you go. Yeah. So some of those games for Windows games that don't function at all anymore. I think some of them actually do not work, period, because they can't off. Um, Dirt. I think Dirt 2 does still work. It would just pop up and say it's trying to off, but then it'll just like go away. Um, but still, like I, th I think in that case, you could actually write if you if you if you had the technical skill, you can actually modify your installation to remove that authorization so that way you can access the game quicker because it does say restore the title to its original uh, specifications, which originally it would install at the authorization phase waiting for a response from a server that doesn't fucking exist anymore. And so modifying it so you take that part out is fully covered under this. Um, consult a lawyer before you do it, I guess, because I'm not one, but still. Uh, that is pretty much the way this is worded. So that's that's great. That's great news. Um, but dude, that's it. That's it. Uh, let's see. The original uh, Red De Dead Rising games were games were oh Dead Rising. I thought I said Red Dead. Sorry. Um, the section of the copyright comes under subject of uh, usurping market demand for an original work with a new work that is created. Uh, kind of not a topic that is. Uh, uh, but is that double space with the? 
Oh yeah, yeah. So well, they they it's written like this. Uh, they write it like this because they actually go through and they when they print it out, uh, they actually go through and they make changes in the lines in between. It's kind of like school, right, where the teacher will write. This is way wrong. Please do this whole thing over. Uh, that is pretty much the reason why we have these like spaces everywhere because they actually physically go through and handwrite everything in between each every and all these. So that's why these these damn documents are like forty thousand pages when in reality they're only twenty thousand pages. They just got these things all you know uh, spaced out. See here it's not because you'd basically use the, the 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 thing here to go through and do it. Uh, there might be another reason for it, but uh, this is from what I've seen. This is pretty much the way it functions. So. Um, so yeah, that's it. Uh, that's pretty much everything that happened at TwitchCon. And uh, um, I guess the next thing I look forward to is BlizzCon. BlizzCon's coming up in uh, two days, three days. It was Monday, right? Monday, so uh, uh, Thursday night. I think Thursday evening or something like that, I'll be picking up my ticket, chef. Uh, and then, um, then go from there. Did I have fun? Oh, that's a great question. That's a really good question. Oof. Did I have fun? I can't just say, yeah, totally. Because there was, uh, because the, the, you, you've, you've heard people say, you know, um, like Jesse Cox and, and I think Pac and a few others say, uh, that they don't go to these things anymore because it is an ego contest. Uh, it is, it is. VidCon was the same way. VidCon was exactly the same way. I went to VidCon in 2015, exact same thing. Um, TwitchCon... It has gotten there. Like TwitchCon has definitely gotten to the point now where it feels like it's an it's it's an ego. It's an it's it's just an uh, uh, like everyone's just comparing preparing egos. Uh, not necessarily like they're not really trying to, but everybody's trying to be a character and everyone's trying to like make a scene and everyone's got their fucking IRL shit on and they're trying to like you know create this these moments and everything. Uh, and and you know. And even like the, even like the panels, right? Like a lot of the panels, like, and, and Josh and I ran into this problem last time we went, we went to, uh, we went to a few panels at TwitchCon, uh, here. It was here actually. It wasn't, uh, last year. It was two years ago. Uh, and I remember we walked out of the panels and we were just like, man, like we already know all this stuff. And so it's like, I feel like TwitchCon is good for people that are trying to make a name for themselves, which is why everybody is, um is trying to like why it becomes like such an ego contest uh is because it is full of those folks but if you've been doing it for long enough where like maybe you don't necessarily need an assistance in like the audio department or you don't need any assistance in assistance in uh in in, in setting up a video stream or interacting with your viewers or whatever like these are things that like i, I look at and say you know this is pretty common knowledge for for me and probably for a lot of you too um because that's just, yeah, sure, this, this is all great. Wow, you guys you guys are all just like preaching to the choir here. And so I feel like those things are not for me. I almost feel like, uh, I feel like uh, when you when you leave high school and then a few years later, you and a couple of your friends go back to high school and you see all the other all the other kids running around and you're like, wow, like, and you hear these kids talking, you're just like, man, these kids, like, they're, they're, you, you, they're still learning, but some of them act like they know everything. <laughs> like, that's, that's, what it, that's what it feels like in some cases. But the majority of people were chill. Like, I mean, a majority of people were chill. I really enjoyed hanging out with a bunch of folks uh, while we were there on the floor or uh, uh, you're back at the bar. Um, yeah, it was overall. It was it was it was still good, uh, but it needs it needs improvement. But I, I I do feel like if if I'm gonna grow out of any any convention anytime soon, I feel like TwitchCon is gonna be the one that I grow out of next. Uh, I'm gonna get I'm yeah I'm just gonna get old too old for it pretty much. I'm gonna be like I'm too old for this shit. Too, I'm too old fucking <laughs> for this shit. Uh, yeah, I think that's the TwitchCon is going to be next on my list. VidCon uh, 2015, I went there and I was just like, you know what? Wow, I am never going to VidCon again. It is like all 12, 13 year olds, you know, and TwitchCon is pretty much shaping up to be the same thing. I'm old enough to be a lot of these folks dad and I don't feel like, you know, it's like maybe <laughs> maybe I'll uh, if TwitchCon ends up coming here to San Jose again, maybe I just won't get a ticket and just go to the bars and just hang out with you guys because I feel like that's great because then you know, have to like swim through like children. But uh, <laughs> the children, it wasn't it wasn't that bad, but still, it was kind of uh, it was definitely I was definitely the old man in the group for sure. <laughs> uh, the one thing I got from today was uh, surprised at how bad the webcam looked compared to the DSLR. Oh no! It's like that was the, the reason why it looked so bad is because you're looking at a small, a small uh, image that I had to zoom in. So, um, 
Twitch, but no ninja con to keep the kids away. Oh, that was part of the roast. Actually, somebody said that it was like, oh yeah, all these, uh, all of your fans are like outside because they can't get it. They're not old enough, which is pretty great. Uh, yeah, it was awesome. There's, there was a lot of good moments. I think that overall, I still like TwitchCon for sure. Uh, next, next year, if it's too close to BlizzCon, I might have to seriously think uh, about whether or not I want to go. Um, unless it's here. If it's here in San Jose again or San Francisco, then you know I'll probably go at least for a couple days. Uh, but if, uh, uh, if it's, uh, if it's down in, uh, in LA or something, I just, I'm just not going to go, especially if it's like right next to BlizzCon, I'd much rather go BlizzCon. You know why? Because at BlizzCon, we're all old because we've all been playing fucking WoW since we were like in our twenties and now we're all in our thirties. Some of us even more, <laughs> even beyond that. Uh, and so I feel like I relate to a lot of you guys a little bit better. So you're saying you're better than others. Yeah. Low key age complex. Sure. Why not? Brand me with that. I'm okay with that. <laughs> Fucking guys. All right. Wait, that's that's the end of the show. So let's say bye to YouTube, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, chat, for co-hosting with me today. Thank you so much. You guys are beautiful. I appreciate it. Uh, you guys really did a good job. I feel like you guys were on point uh, with your commentary. I appreciate it. Um, you can follow me. Twitter.com slash AKA Mike B. Twitch.tv slash AKA Mike B and all that good stuff. Thank you again, chat, for joining me on this special edition TwitchCon News Roundup. Oh yeah, like, favorite, subscribe, smash the bell, and all that good stuff. Thank you.